In order for a computer to earn a spot in my collection, it needs to serve a purpose. Normally, when a computer won't fit into my life, I recycle it, or repurpose it, or make something cool out of it. However, this is a machine that I've struggled to find a purpose for, and I can't bring myself to get rid of it. You see, this computer is special to me. The reason? It's a Mac. More specifically, this is a 2007 base model iMac 7,1, the first of the aluminum iMacs. Inside, it's got a Meram Core 2 Duo T7300 mobile processor, 1GB of DDR2 sodium RAM, and a Radeon HD 2400 XT. It also currently has a molasses slow 240GB mechanical drive. In day-to-day -day functionality, this machine, well over a decade old, is showing its age. On the outside though, that's where this machine shines. Prior to this model, Apple used this dated looking plastic design. With their 2007 release, however, they changed that to reflect their shift to more premium materials like aluminum and glass. This is a design choice that they had been moving to for some time at that point. It started with their update to the PowerBook G4 featuring an all aluminum design. For nearly the past two decades, Apple has perfected their modern aluminum and glass focus with their most recent iPhone, the 11 Pro Max, being their latest exhibition. That's part of the reason I haven't gotten rid of this machine. It still looks gorgeous with its clean design, and despite being a decade old, the only thing that gives away its true age is the rather chunky screen bezels. But to be fair, Apple still hasn't fixed those with even their iMac Pro lineup. This particular iMac was purchased brand new in February of 2008 and used as a standard personal computer until around 2016 when I acquired it. Since then, I've been trying to find a purpose for it. You see, the problem is, it's old. Not only is it old, but it's old and was never particularly quick either. Let's face it, this is a bare minimum base model with a low powered mobile chip. At first I tried using it as a music streaming device, but it was replaced after a while as my setup changed. Since then it's been powered up and down every so often, but only for the novelty of using Mac OS for a moment. But it's not even the latest version or anything near it. That gave me an idea. I'm never going to use this as a daily device, but if I'm going to keep it for the sake of having a macOS device in the studio, then it should at least be usable. And an upgrade to the new macOS Catalina should give me access to more applications such as the latest version of Chrome and so on. Here's where I encountered my next problem. Due to its age, macOS Catalina doesn't officially support the iMac 7,1. Note that I said officially. DOSDude1's macOS patchers are famous in the used hardware community for being able to give support to unsupported machines. It's got a well-documented support page to go along with it, and shoot! This entire plan hinged on the iMac being able to upgrade to the latest version of macOS, but it's not even supported in what I call the extended support list. Hold on for one second. It's always good to read the fine print when it comes to these make or break deals, and here is my saving grace. DOSDude1 says down at the bottom of the unsupported list that, quote, the 2007 iMac 7,1 is compatible if the CPU is upgraded to a Penryn-based Core 2 Duo such as a T9300. Now, I didn't want to tear this whole thing apart as iMacs are infamously difficult to service, so I tried to find an alternative. DOSDude1's patchers going back as far as Sierra contain the same line about the iMac 7,1 needing a CPU upgrade. So using an older version is out of the question. Opening up this iMac would be inevitable. Then began the half-baked research stage. Penryn was the code name for a series of mobile Intel processors released in 2008. The Catalina Patcher website specifically mentions the T9300 chip. At the time of these endeavors, the T9300 was about $20 more expensive than another variant of the Penryn platform, the T9400. At first glance, the T9400 appears to be an upgrade. There's a slight clock speed advantage to the T9400, as well as a significant bump in bus speed. Apple's new iMacs are terrible to service, to be entirely honest. They use a disposable adhesive that needs to be cut through every time the glass bezel panel is taken off. This is especially offensive because Apple's devices have been repairable in the past. The original model aluminum iMacs are an almost perfect example of this. Rather than using an adhesive that needs to be replaced, this iMac uses magnets. What a genius design! It's friendly for people trying to service your devices. Incredible! While the iMacs opened up, I'd say some other upgrades are in order as well. 
In addition to the T9400 CPU, I'll be putting in a 120GB Kingston SSD. That should improve the overall snappiness of the machine, as the hard drive is a major contributor to the overall slow feeling. While I'm at it, I'll also put in 4GB of RAM to replace the 1GB currently installed. My next step was to get the iMac ready for being upgraded. I'll be replacing the hard drive with blank storage so a recovery disk is in order. Luckily, DOS Dude One's Catalina Patrick can install to a USB drive. So I made my backup and checked that it was recognized, and it was off to the upgrades. iFixit's guide was very helpful in the disassembly. I still hold firm that while this machine may be easier to upgrade than Apple's newer iMacs, it's still not the most user-friendly. Annoying? Yes, but I suppose I'll deal. All in all, the upgrades went smoothly. I had to remove the hard drive cage as I didn't quite feel like putting a 3.5 inch to 2.5 inch drive adapter in there, but because an SSD has no moving parts, it'll still work fine. After installing the CPU, new thermal paste was applied and the iMac was slapped back together. One final upgrade was to replace the measly 1GB of RAM with 4 gigs. It's not a huge amount, but there still should be a noticeable difference. Like any smart technician would, I made sure to test the machine before the final assembly. Pressing the power button gets us a fan spin, that's a good sign, and nothing. This CPU upgrade was my next big mistake, or so I thought. After doing some research, which I admittedly should have done long before, I found out that the iMac 7,1 only supports two Penryn CPUs, the T9300 and the T9500. It completely skips over the T9400. At least, that's what I found online. That's gonna have to be an experiment for another video, though. But this wasn't the actual reason it wasn't turning on. I wouldn't realize my actual mistake until much later, but I'll cover that in a moment. Once again, I hopped on eBay and purchased the proper CPU, the Intel Core 2 Duo T9300. Then I repeated every single step I had done up to that point, disassembling the iMac, removing the motherboard and heatsink, cleaning off the thermal paste, installing a new CPU, and then everything in reverse. Before putting the whole machine back together though, I figured it would be in the best interest of my mental health to see if it actually worked. Last time, I was so confident that it would work perfectly that I put all the screws in, which was only a pain to me. <sighs> so without anything holding the motherboard or screen down, I hit the power button and nothing. Again. This was concerning. I was sure that this CPU was compatible. It's literally the one listed on DOS Dude's website for goodness sake. At this point, the only thing running through my mind is that I had probably mucked things up and bricked this beautiful thing. Looks like we've got to put on our troubleshooting hats and figure this one out. Maybe it's not toasting because there's nothing on the drive? I don't know why that would be, but hey, it's worth a shot. After switching out the SSD for the original hard drive, still nothing. Next, I hopped on Intel's website to do some more research. As I mentioned earlier, this particular iMac was purchased new in February 2008. Intel's Penryn T9300 CPU was released less than a month earlier in January of the same year. My thought process here was that this CPU probably didn't really exist when this iMac was manufactured, so the BIOS would most likely not support it without an update. In order to test my theory, I once again switched out the CPU for the original T7300, the Meram chip. Try 473, nothing. Now I'm almost certain the whole computer's bricked. Not even the original CPU is working. I'm not getting a boot time or anything. I'm gonna be honest, it was kind of disheartening. The iMac was in its original configuration and it wasn't working. And I realized, no it wasn't. The only thing I hadn't tried was the RAM. Oh, that RAM was the death of me. I had swapped the CPU several times when it was only really a problem with the RAM. I'm not entirely sure why, but for whatever reason, the two sticks of Sodium DDR2 wouldn't even yield a post. Using the original 1 gig stick, though, allowed it to work perfectly. This is where things get even weirder. If I use one stick of the new RAM in conjunction with the original stick, the machine still works. Whether it shows up with 3 gigabytes or just the one is yet to be seen, though. That'll be discussed a little bit later here. Then, for the final time, I swapped the CPU for the T9300, the one that's stated as supported. I'm ready for this project to be done and for it to work, so I won't mess around with the 9400 in this video. More isopropyl, paper towels, and new thermal paste later, and it's time for another test. Now we're getting somewhere! It took us long enough, but hey, I'm good with this. Finally, I can put some screws in and do some final reassembly. Feeling risky, I decided to close up the machine with the bezel and all. 
After all that work inside the iMac, I'm definitely ready to put down the screwdriver and pick up the mouse. Because the SSD I installed was completely blank, I didn't need to mess with any boot sequences and it picked up the Catalina installer USB right away. From here, it was smooth sailing. The installation was fairly slow, but that's to be expected with any fresh OS install. One of my major concerns on the software side was that I wasn't sure if Catalina would support hardware acceleration with the ATI 2400 XT. DOS Dude One's website states that a lack of hardware acceleration won't provide a very pleasant experience. On that same page though, the only GPUs specifically acknowledged as not supporting hardware acceleration are the 5000 and 6000 series ATI cards. The card in my iMac is older though, so nothing is certain. First impressions with the overall feel of the installer yields a positive outlook, but we'll have to confirm that when I finish installing Catalina. And finish installing I did. The regular install finished in 15 minutes or so, and the post-install patches wrapped things up quickly. For the first time, I could now set my boot device and enter into the land of modern macOS. I'm not an Apple user, so I had to create an Apple ID, and then I finished setting up my account. Overall, this whole setup was very user-friendly and felt fairly snappy. And now, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to macOS Catalina on a 2007 iMac. This is a journey that took way too long. Many mistakes were made which admittedly could have been avoided had I done my research, but I've accomplished my goal. I'm running a modern version of Mac OS on a 12 year old iMac. About my Mac shows some peculiarities, shall we say. The T9300 chip is a 2.5 gigahertz processor, but it shows up as a measly 400 megahertz Intel processor. It is running at its rated 2.5 gigahertz though, not to fear. The second thing that seems out of place is the RAM. The 4GB kick I installed earlier prevented the whole machine from posting, but the original 1GB stick worked fine. Because of this, I was entirely expecting only 1GB to be usable, but all three are showing up. So why the 2x2 sticks didn't work, I don't know. It's curious, but I'll always take the extra RAM. So how does it run? Being over 12 years old, this is surprisingly usable. Hardware acceleration appears to work just fine, easing my concerns from earlier. And overall, it feels quick. General web browsing and office work works fine. Even HD YouTube is doable. I wouldn't for the life of me try editing on this, as I have very little patience when it comes to getting work done. As a standard home computer though, this would do great. Much better than it was with that sluggish hard drive and outdated OS. Well, there we have it. The journey of the iMac 7,1. It's been a roller coaster of disassembly and troubleshooting and disassembly and troubleshooting and disassembly and troubleshooting. And troubleshooting blah, blah, blah. Anyway, I now have an old iMac running a new OS. Why was this important, you may ask? I don't know. I just wanted to. That's all I've got for you today. And I will see you in a bit.